Love Em or Hate Em, thanks to their overall popularity, copyright-free persona, and none relation to controversial hate figures, Nazi zombies aside, zombies as enemy in pop culture are here to stay. The same goes for video games, with the living impaired appearing in titles going as far back as 1984 with Quicksilver's Zombie Zombie for the ZX Spectrum, even if it's essentially just a reskin of 3D Ant Attack. But while that was just a one-off, the longest running zombie gaming franchise, amazingly, is Ubisoft's Zombie series. Surely you're wrong Larry, I hear you ask. There was just the 2012 Wii U launch title Zombie U, and the 2015 update for the PS4, Xbox One and PC. Well, that's true, yes. But what most people don't realise is that while most believe that the 2015 Zombie is just a re-release of the Wii U's launch title, it is in fact a remake of a reboot of a remake of Ubisoft's first ever video game. Intrigued? Well, hello there, I'm Guru Larry, and I'll welcome you to Ubisoft's original, original zombie. It's games that yanks can whack. Long before Ubisoft were entertaining us with their Assassin's Creeds, their Prince of Persia's, their Raymans, heck, even before their bizarre early 90s penchant for releasing nothing but endless tennis games, the French publisher was actually innovating the video gaming world with their point and click adventures. Yep, even a year before LucasArts were being heralded in the field. So, while they are making massive strides in the genre with criminally overlooked classics such as Bat, the Bureau of Astral Troubleshooters, Ubisoft's first ever jump into this burdening genre was a little known horror game all the way back in 1986 by the name of Zombie, an exclusive title developed for France's most popular home computer at the time, the Amstrad CPC. The original 1986 version of Zombie is actually a loose adaptation of the European cut of George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, which was renamed Zombie in Europe though the French spelling of zombie is missing the E, hence why the game is spelled Z-O-M-B-I. And as Ubisoft are a French publisher, well, you do the math, um, colloquial spelling. But since the movie has been subsequently rebranded back to Dawn of the Dead globally, the series now has nothing to do with the movies whatsoever. Now the plot of the game loosely follows that of the movie, albeit with four all new characters to control, Patrick, Yannick, Sylvie and Alexandra, all of whom have actually been named and modelled after the developers of the game, and the main objective is to find petrol fuel helicopter to escape the city. So what better place to look for helicopter fuel than inside a shopping mall? Obviously. Even more convoluted is how you obtain said gasoline from the shopping mall. First of all, after arming your team, you need to close off the mall by locating the keys hidden in various rooms throughout the building, which are used on several trucks outside to block all the entrances. Don't ask why you just can't use the fuel from the trucks, or why they can't drive off of them instead. You know, video game logic. But after that, the living dead must be trioxin infected zombies, as you next need to hunt down all the living dead in the mall, then drag their bodies into the food mall's basement to stop them from re-zombying. Doing this will then lure a local biker gang into the mall, whom you then need to kill off also. Then siphon off the gas from their van. Do this, and off you Todd and your Huey. There's a couple of neat elements to the game, such as the fact that even though you're controlling four characters, you'll need to constantly switch between two of them in the basement segments, as one needs to hold a torch while the other shoots the undead down there. And if one of your party dies, you'll need to contend with their zombie too wherever they died. The only real downside to zombie, aside from getting into it, is, as this is the French publisher's first ever game, the French to English translation is a little messy, such as there's the odd bit of English in the update panel, and most of the store signs and adverts are still in French on screen, 
despite the fact the game is set in the USA. So a fun fact for you, the franchise's name is actually spelled Z-O-M-B-I because of poor localization with their first title, rather than any stylistic choice. Even the instruction manual is scrapped in favour of some guy drawing a comic with his bestest borrow over his lunch break, complete with even more English. But if you've played enough of these point-and-click dungeon crawlers, even the cavernous perils of one set in a shopping centre, it's not too hard to get to grips with the game. So what did the gaming press at the time think of Yubi's fledgling title? Well, for the original 1986 Amstrad release, CPC magazine Amtix absolutely adored it, giving it a score of 93%, stating, Zombie is a superb game that deserves to do well. The later 1990 re-release on other systems fared extremely well too. Computer and video games covered Zombie right at the beginning of their 90s every single video game ever is brilliant reviewing mantra, giving the ZX Spectrum port 93% and the PC version 92%. And professional idiots Ace Magazine reviewed the Amiga and Atari ST versions, giving it to their usual nonsensical scoring system for 860 out of 1000, but lived up to their normal high standards of journalism by pointing out the best thing about the game is that you can control it with a mouse. But the lowest score Zombie ever received was 72% by the one who covered the ST version, with their only real gripe being it was actually a three-year-old port of an 8-bit game, which is a bit of an unfair nitpick in hindsight. So there you have it, the story of gaming's longest-running zombie franchise. A franchise that spanned so far that everybody forgot it was even a franchise to begin with. But the original Zombie, especially the updated 16-bit versions, which streamlined a lot of the unnecessary parts of the original, are highly recommended to try out. It was an amazing game for Ubisoft to kick out of the gate for their legacy. It's just a shame that more people aren't aware of its existence. But I've been Guru Larry. Goodbye, and good gaming. Hello you. Thanks ever so for watching. I thought the original zombie might make an interesting subject this time around. Not just because of the franchise, but also because of the interesting story of it and UB's entrance into the video gaming world. If you want to help me make out future episodes, please have a look at my Patreon page as it really helps me out. Or if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. But next time, I'll be mixing things up with a factual episode on something I guarantee you've never heard before. So see you then. <laughs> Tara for now. If you want to help me make out, if you want me to help me... <laughs>